In this module, we will study graphical methods for design of CAM profiles. Our objective is to determine the exact shape of a CAM surface that is required to deliver a specified follower motion. And for the purposes of this module, we'll assume that the required follower motion has been completely determined. Furthermore, we'll only address the design of plate CAMs. The basic principle for graphical design of CAMs is that of kinematic inversion, in which we imagine that the CAM is stationary and we allow the follower to rotate opposite to the direction of the CAM rotation. As the follower rotates, the displacement of the tracer point will be according to the displacement from the displacement curve of the follower motion. For example, if we look at the knife edge follower shown in this picture, the locus that will be generated by the trace point, which is this point here, as the follower moves relative to the cam, is identical to the cam profile. So this will allow us to design the cam profile that gives the displacement of the follower according to the design displacement curve. Let us now look at a few examples to see how the principle of kinematic inversion is applied. We will start with the design of cam profile for a reciprocating knife edge follower. The figure on the top left shows an example displacement curve. We will use phi to denote the camshaft angle rotation and this displacement curve is given to us. The first step is to choose a prime circle radius. Now recall for the knife edge follower, the prime circle is the same as base circle. Now some authors use prime circle exclusively for curved followers. But as I told you in the last module, here we'll be using prime circle and base circle interchangeably for knife edge follower and flat faced follower and for roller follower we will distinguish between prime circle and base circle. We are assuming here that the cam is rotating in the clockwise direction. Now note if this circle was the profile of the cam then as the cam rotates in the clockwise direction the follower would stay in this same place. This fact will be useful for justifying the steps in the construction procedure. So the first step is to divide the x-axis of the displacement diagram into a number of segments. And this division can be done with equal spacing or unequal spacing. Then we need to divide the prime circle into corresponding segments. Now remember the principle of kinematic inversion. Since the cam is rotating clockwise, we will be measuring the angles anticlockwise. So we'll take this angle phi 1 here and we'll measure the phi 1 angle here and we'll mark the point A1 on the prime circle. Then we'll take the angle phi 2 and mark the point A2. We'll take the angle phi 3 and mark the point A3 and so on till we go up to A8 for the number of segments that we have. Now we will take this distance S1 at phi 1 and on the line OA1 extended we'll mark B1. Similarly, we'll take the distance S2 and mark B2 at a distance of S2 from A2 on the line OA2 extended. In the same process, we'll get B3, B4, B5, B6, B7. These BIs will be the positions of the trace point as the follower moves in the anticlockwise direction. Now, we will draw a smooth curve through these points. This curve is the required CAM profile. Now you can note that when the CAM moves clockwise, when the point A1 arrives here, this knife edge will be at B1 and the displacement will be S1 and so on. Another way to think about this CAM profile curve is as a modification from the circle with radial displacement of the points. The amount by which a point is radially displaced is given by the displacement diagram. Note that we are assuming here that the follower is moving vertically. Therefore, we start with the knife edge at this position. One more thing to note is in the assignment, instead of this curve, I have given you a table which essentially has these values of displacements along with the angles. So the same procedure needs to be followed except you do not need to do step one. Now the procedure that we used for designing the cam profile for knife edge follower can also be used for a roller follower. For roller followers, there will be one additional step which we will discuss 
in a little bit. Now let us look at the problem of design of cam profile for an offset roller follower. We will start with the displacement diagram and phi will be my angle of camshaft rotation. E is the offset or eccentricity and I am assuming the cam is moving in the clockwise direction. The first step here again is to choose the prime circle radius R0 and construct the prime circle with radius R0. The prime circle is this circle here. The second step here is to construct the offset circle with radius equal to the amount of offset T. E. So this offset T e will be specified to you for class assignments. In practice, you have to choose this offset T. E. So the offset circle is shown here. We again assume that the follower will be moving vertically upwards. So at theta equal to zero, this is the position of the follower. As before, we divide the displacement diagram x-axis or abscissa into a number of segments and this may be equal or unequal. Then we need to divide the offset circle into the corresponding segments. You need to be careful here, it is not the prime circle but the offset circle. So we start with our initial position which is k0 here, then take the angle phi1 and mark k1. So this is phi1, similarly this is phi2 for which we get k2, this is phi3 for which we get k3 and so on till we go up to k8. So at the end of this step, we have located all the points ki on the offset circle. We will now construct lines tangent to the offset circle from these stations or ki's, dividing the prime circle into corresponding segments. So from k0, I already have a0 here. From k1, I draw a tangent to get a1 here. So now there are two directions in which this tangent can be extended. One is in this direction, the other is in this direction. To disambiguate the direction, remember that from kinematic inversion principle, the follower has to rotate in the anti-clockwise direction in this case. So this whole L shape here, it has to rotate anti-clockwise in a rigid fashion. Therefore, my direction should be in this direction. We draw the tangent at K2 and get point A2 where it intersects the prime circle. Draw tangent at K3, get point A3 and so on. So after the step five, we have located all the points AI on the prime circle. Now we need to transfer distances. So we take S1 at phi1 and then mark out the point B1 such that A1, B1 equal to S1. Similarly, at A2, we take the distance S2 and mark point B2 such that A2, B2 equal to S2. And we go on likewise till we reach the end. At the end of this step, we have located all the points B0, B1, B2 to B8. Note that A0 and B0 are same because at phi equal to zero, my displacement is zero. Now we draw a smooth curve through these points. Now if we were designing a knife edge follower, then this orange curve here would be our cam profile. But since we are using a roller follower and this is the locus of the tracer point or the center of the roller follower, we have to have one additional step. And the additional step is that we draw the roller at this point bi's and then we construct the cam profile by drawing a smooth curve that is tangent to all these roller positions so the green curve here shows the final cam profile for the roller follower now recall the first problem that we did where the offset was zero and we considered a knife edge follower in that case if you had to consider a roller follower you had to do this step again. Or at each one of the stations, you have to draw a roller and then you have to join a smooth curve that is tangent to all these rollers. This would give you the profile if you wanted a roller follower with zero offset. Now let us consider the case of a flat face follower. Again, this diagram here shows the displacement diagram and phi is my angle of the camshaft and we have to construct the cam profile corresponding to this displacement profile. The follower is moving vertically, therefore we choose our zero position here. And the purple line here shows the flat face. The first few steps would be same as we had for the knife edge follower with zero offset. We'll first divide the x-axis 
of the displacement curve into a number of segments, which may be equal or unequal. We divide the prime circle into the corresponding segments. We take the angle phi 1 and measure phi 1 here and get this point. We measure phi 2 and get this point. Measure phi 3 and get this point and so on. After that, we take S1 and from this point, we locate B1. We take S2 and locate B2. We take S3 and locate B3 and so on. Now we draw the lines that are perpendicular to these radial lines at D1, B2, B3, B4 and so on. These purple lines represent the position of the flat faced follower. Now we construct a smooth curve that is tangent to these purple lines. It is important to note here that this smooth curve may not pass through the BIs. This orange curve is then the cam profile. Now let us look into a unique aspect of the flat faced follower. In a flat faced follower, the common normal between the flat face and the cam profile is always vertical, that is along the direction of motion of the follower. Therefore, the pressure angle is zero, which is the ideal pressure angle. So it would seem that we should always design a flat faced follower. However, since the force is not along the same line as the axis of motion, there is an overturning moment that comes in. And this creates these forces Fp here between the follower and the guide within which it moves. This force Fp creates friction force along the vertical direction, which can impede or jam the motion. Thus, this overturning moment can actually jam the motion of the follower. So it is not ideal to always have a flat faced follower. If this overturning moment is small enough so that jamming is not an issue, then the flat faced follower is a good choice. Another aspect that you have to be careful about, especially for curved followers or roller followers, is the curvature of the cam profile. Now curvature of a mathematical function is proportional to the rate of change of direction of the function. And the direction of the function is essentially the function's tangent. The curvature is the rate of change of the tangent and therefore it is essentially dependent on the second derivative of the function. And radius of curvature is the reciprocal of curvature. This is more of a hand wavy intuitive description of a curvature. There is a more mathematical definition of a curvature. And for the pitch curve or the cam profile, the mathematical definition of the curvature is as follows. What I want you to note here is the parameters that are affecting the curvature. The curvature is affected by my displacement s, velocity v and acceleration a from my SVAJ curve and note here velocity units are length per radian and acceleration units are length per radian square. The curvature is also affected by the radius of the prime circle that we chose rp. Once we have defined s, v and a then we can control the curvature by controlling rp. The problem that can happen with roller followers if the curvature is not chosen properly is that of undercutting. If the radius of curvature of the cam profile is negative, then we can have two point contact as shown here. And the follower will never have contact with this part of the cam. So the motion of the follower will not be as desired. Another form of undercutting that can occur is due to small radius of curvature. When the radius of curvature of the pitch curve is equal to the radius of curvature of the roller follower, the situation on the left happens where there is a cusp and at this cusp there is a point contact which can cause wear and tear and high stress concentration. Another situation can happen when the radius of curvature of the pitch curve is less than the radius of the roller follower. There can be missing material here due to undercutting and the cam profile will not be manufactured appropriately. So in general what we want to avoid undercutting is that my minimum radius of curvature should be at least twice the radius of the roller. So to summarize our whole cam design procedure, we start with a cam timing diagram or partial specification of the cam follower motion. From there, we can compute the displacement curve of the follower motion and in general the SVAJ curves. We can use polynomials for modeling follower motion as you have seen in this class. We can also use SCCA curves, which we haven't seen, but these are restricted to double dwell motions. So in general, cam design involves 
computing this displacement curves and then using it to design the cam profile. And the metrics that we use to evaluate cams are the pressure angle, the minimum radius of the curvature for roller followers, and the overturning moment for flat-faced followers.